the weather forecast with Akendo Gaz. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the weather forecast. I hope you had a successful day. Between tonight and tomorrow morning, we expect parts of the east, northwest, and south regions to experience heavy precipitation, while the rest of the nation experiences light precipitation. We may get as low as 18 degrees in the west region, with the north Adamwa and center regions expecting as low as 21 degrees. The far north may also get temperature as low as 29 degrees. Next, we go to Italy to the east where this evening may be heavy rainfall in the towns of Abongbang and Betwa. And by morning, it would be cloudy with heavy rainfall expected in Betwa. Next, we go on to the northwest where this evening may be heavy rainfall except for Kambe. And by morning, it would be cloudy with heavy rainfall expected in Bamenda. Lastly, we take you over to the south where this evening may be heavy rainfall in the entire region. And by morning, it will be cloudy with heavy rainfall expected in Ebolova and Sangmalima. To protect yourself and others against the coronavirus, wash your hands regularly with soap and clean water, sneeze with a flexed elbow, and in case of symptoms, call the number 1510. Have a good night. Prime Minister Joseph John Gutierrez in joint trade unionists of the hotel, the restoration and the transport sectors to hold your calm as government multiplies measures to work out palliatives for the coronavirus to, for their business in their sectors to bounce back as soon as possible. They were announced last week. Today, they are on their way to the various subdivisions of the country. The presidential anti-COVID package left Yaoundé today. Over 8,000 ghost workers are currently defrauding the state of billions of CFA francs and they have 30 days to regularize their situation or be instantly flushed out of the state's payroll. Those are our lead stories. Hello, welcome to the program. I am Ben Menopoufong. Prime Minister Joseph John Gute this afternoon held exchanges with leaders of transport, restaurants and hotel trade unions to collect proposals towards reducing the impact of COVID-19 on the business sector. The consultation which falls in line with government's permanent dialogue with the private sector is meant to sample the opinions of grassroots organizations in the search for palliatives to, uh, for, to the effect of the COVID-19 key sectors of the country. Star building correspondent C. Sako Tamko reports. The economic toll of the coronavirus on the country's economy is already visible in the transport sector, one of the highest hit. With social gatherings prohibited, many individuals quarantine or simply afraid to go out and with reduced number of passengers on board buses, taxis or motorbikes, disruption of activities in the sector is considerable. On instructions from the head of state, Prime Minister John Gute held a series of consultation with members of the different transporter syndicates who voiced different concerns. We workers of transport think that if the price of fuel was reduced, it will have an impact in our purse directly. We are just waiting for what they have think in the committee that had been created by the Prime Minister. It's no exception in the tourist industry. Hotels and restaurants are deeply hit and are witnessing collapse. Circumstances are changing by the day, and no one knows the duration of COVID-19 pandemic. For these reasons, they are calling on government to... The next steps who can be tourism, national tourism. For instance, we can be looking for good price, the offer who can sweet any Cameroonian to make sure that they know their country, they visit their countries, and the economy can take off again. Engagement taken with regards to the holding of the African Nations Championship must be respected, and there's much to be threatened over. We are suggesting to the Prime Minister to be aware of um, how can we be um, reimbursing all the, the, the credits the bank allowed us to, to, to get. We want to think that after this pandemic, the tourist uh, sector has to take off. 
the head of government who presented the preoccupations of the president in ensuring that the economy gets back on track said government will study the different demands and take measures in days ahead to mitigate the effect of the pandemic on the economy. A survey uh, in the evaluation of the socioeconomic effects of COVID-19 in Cameroon is being implemented in the country from this month of April to May 2020. The survey is the initiative of the Cameroon government through the Ministry of Economy, Planning and Regional Development and the Ministry of Finance as well as the National Institute of Statistics to inform the government on the exact impact and consequences of the COVID-19 on the national economy. Luma Slim Davis reports. Businesses and households have been subjected to untold difficulties as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. It therefore becomes necessary for government to seek ways of cushioning the socio-economic effects of the pandemic in Cameroon. The National Institute of Statistics is in charge of a collection of data just to help the government to address public policies. In this case, a survey which are, we are implementing now is to assess the effect of the coronavirus on business and uh, on households. Why households are a target? Target because the effect on the households are so important. The effect on their revenue is very important. In this case, how can the government and its partners help how to survey, to support and to, to be resilient face of a coronavirus? Data collection operations have been carried out remotely by the National Institute of Statistics from businesses and households through telephone calls, emails, WhatsApp messaging, or on the survey website. The target population for the business component in the survey include formal and informal production units. In the second of our series on the fate of the banking sector in the outbreak of the coronavirus, we focused tonight, <coughs> excuse me, we focused tonight, <coughs> excuse me, we focused tonight on the financing of the sector one of the measures initiated by the Bank of Central African States to enable businesses caution the shock from the COVID-19 is to refinance the banking sector. However, the 250 billion CFA francs already made available for that purpose is yet to be disbursed by the commercial banks and the banks are eagerly waiting. While acknowledging that the move is salutary, the bankers argue that they have a panoply of other dynamics to deal with. Clarice Aray Taka is our lady on the beat. 250 billion CFA francs made available by the Bank of Central African States for the banking system of the sub-region. The interest rate, 3.25%, down from 3.5%. A move aimed at enabling the sector refinance economic activities reeling from the impact of the coronavirus. With this money, uh, we can finance even the uh, small investment and we have to, to, to finance even public contract. We need money. And you know now, uh, the, the, when we finance public contract, the repayment of this contract is not flow, it's not easy then you will have uh, a, a risk and then you can, you can have this money, you can cover this. And the second one is uh, the problem of treasury. By December 2019, commercial banks in Cameroon totaled almost 5,000 billion CFA francs in deposits and more than 3,000 billion CFA francs in loans, an increase compared to 2018 by the same period. However, less money coming in, implying nothing to part with, has brought a new set of dynamics into play, banking experts confess. While acknowledging that the initiative of the central bank is laudable, they nevertheless insist that they have other concerns. The best position is uh, to, to step back, to observe and try to evaluate how far they are exposed in the portfolio that they have now and how they can manage it so that to protect the public saving. It's just to ensure that the banks are able to put into the disposition of the people 
uh, enough currency so that they can uh, take back their money at every time. And the risk for the bank now is the lack of liquidity. Refinancing the economy is inevitable, economists hold, given the present context, to enable sectors hard hit hold the fort. For the banking system, they add, this cannot be downplayed. The two billion worth of presidential anti-COVID gifts are now en route to the 10 regions of the country for distributions to the population for whom they were intended. The gifts were all dispatched today from the esplanade of the Yaoundé City Council in a ceremony chaired by the Territorial Administration Minister who qualified President Paul Beer as a man of words and actions. Kilian Dandifon watched the different convoys take off from the national capital. Under appropriate security measures, 10 long convoys led by resounding sirens to the 10 regions with presidential gifts of 10 billion worth material to fight COVID-19 in all the 360 subdivisions of the country. This comes barely seven days after President Paul Bia announced the gifts. The head of state is a man of action. And the head of state, President Paul Bia, that we all know, when he says something, he does it immediately. The distribution plan is clear. After this official launching, the regional governors will then take over and will start the distribution at the local level. The senior divisional officers will do it at the level of the divisions and the divisional officers will do it at the level of the subdivisions. The presidential package goes beyond preventive kits of hand sanitizers, face masks, laundry soap and buckets. The head of state president Paul B has opted for the rapid test. So what in the days ahead we will give to the Minister of Health in this program will be test that immediately you are tested, you have your results after five or ten minutes. So your, your head is clear. Territorial administration minister has called on people of goodwill to join the presidential and national COVID-19 response efforts while sounding a warning note to anyone with an activity outside the official action plan. And the Minister of Public Health in a tweet today said he had dispatched teams to inquire about the veracity of proposed remedies for COVID-19 by the Archbishop of Douala and the Madagascar government. Since the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic, there have been repeated suggestions that herbs and some locally made portions uh, can cure the disease, suggestions which have often been refuted and even been doubted by many. In today's newscast, we bring the topic to the fore and can traditional medicine in collaboration with modern medicine provide the magic portion to defeat the global enemy? Beatrice Law Samba attempts an answer. There are many, probably the loudest voices, which would give an outright no to traditional medicine as a solution to the novel coronavirus. We are talking about a disease that is very life-threatening uh, disease. I cannot recommend herbs. Such school of thought is buttressed by the fact that traditional medicine is based on no rationale and emanates from practices, customs and habits which are not structurally organized. On the flip side of the coin, some people say the COVID-19 pandemic provides a chance for traditional medicine to be taken seriously. We are making experiments. We have a consortium of researchers. Everything we do is based on experiment. The only thing is that we're not making any publicity because we're doing that because we believe our traditional medicine is really rich. We're working with traditional healers to train them how to use traditional medicine to make standard formulation to learn the toxicity, toxic doses. Dr. Peyu, a biochemist, is championing the course of traditional medicine. She thinks health solutions are found in our natural environment. We have the solution in Africa. The plant has a whole lot of properties, so and the plant has less unexpected or undesirable effects. So the plant is natural, so the plant heals naturally. People saying that plants cannot heal 
people, they have to go learn from history. But medical doctors do not seem to dance the dance of naturalists. They, however, have a meeting point. We have in Cameroon an academy of medicine that can manage the effort of traditional medicines to become a part of the therapeutics that we use in our disease in our country. The Cameroonian Minister of Public Health thinks there is no smoke without fire and wants to verify the possibility that herbal portions prepared by the Archbishop of Douala and the government of Madagascar could be the solutions to the most dreaded disease at a time when science is having a hard time finding a solution. Despite the ravaging consequences on humanity, many people still continue to live with the fallacious belief that the coronavirus is an adult affair and has nothing to do with children. But medics say this is nothing short of an illusion as COVID-19 knows neither age nor sex, neither race nor tribe, neither black nor white or again, neither young no old. Alice Mbeya accosted some medics in Yaoundé today to clear the air over this embarrassing fallacy and this is the report she came back with. Medical practitioners say the percentage rate of contamination of coronavirus patients in the country includes adults and children. Globally, if we have 100 persons affected, we have about 80 persons who will not present severe symptoms, and 20 persons will present moderate or severe symptoms. 5% who can have a very severe symptom, and we, we can lose about 1%. Person, person. That statistic, we can range it on children. Most children who are carriers of the gem do not manifest the symptoms. We can have about 20% can present severe symptoms and 5% very severe symptoms. We can range that population in children. Then we can have uh, about 5% of children who can present severe symptoms. In cases where the infected children can now contaminate others, they are obliged to be hospitalized. It's preferred that to be in an uh, appropriate center to be care and we can see them every day. We take care of them, that people we bring them in hospital to have uh, drugs. Reasons why parental care and sensitization of children is very important. When the, the teacher said that you have to wash your hands, you have to wear your mask, small children know how to respect what the teacher says. And you can be very, very surprised. They can know more than you. Children are advised to be more vigilant and with the supervision of their parents, respect government's measures to fight against COVID-19 pandemic. Some health and security officials working in hospitals handling COVID-19 cases in Yaoundé have been trained on how to better receive visitors. The measures taken in these health services seek to ensure the safety of patients and medical practitioners against the coronavirus so that people don't die while struggling to save lives. Ewan Epole was in some of the hospitals in Yaoundé and now reports on how they operate on a daily basis. The reception services of the Jamo, Olembe and Yaoundé General Hospitals have been reorganized to better receive visitors in order to check the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. The hospital through that decided that it was better to make a stand, a stand where people will be screened, screened for symptoms that are in relation to the coronavirus. Starting from the entrance, the patient enters and they have the point to wash their hands. They pass through the stand where they are being flushed and that temperature is being recorded. If the temperature is abnormal, they are being put in the isolated in a unit where they are waiting for a medical consultation. The nurses and security officials have received appropriate circumstantial training. After a number of controls, medical staff confirmed that measures are taken for suspected cases. Every person that has a fever requires to have a specific consultation in the isolation room. The health personnel assigned to carry out these activities work 24 on 7 with a relay period of three days per team. 
The makeshift hospital at the Yaoundé Military Stadium and the former Orca Supermarket Building, both annexes of the Yaoundé Central Hospital, will begin hosting COVID-19 patients by the end of this week. The Minister of Public Health, Manauda Malachi, made the news public in Yaoundé today after an assessment of the work done so far on the two sites. Yoti Kadeli Songe was with the minister during the inspection site and compiled the following report. No balls on the pitch, but tents take center stage here at the Nguaikele Military Stadium, with some 150 beds already made, yet to be occupied by COVID-19 patients. This football stadium is now referred to as the Yaounde Central Hospital Annex No. 1, a quarantine site for coronavirus patients. Generators, ventilators, water heaters and restrooms are also available for use when need be. On another side of the capital city and Vogbi, the engineers are very much present, walking the public health minister through the work done so far in the Estwal or Car supermarket, now referred to as the Yaounde Central Hospital Annex No. 2, with a reanimation center incorporated. Here we have about uh, 320. And uh, in the uh, Stade Militaire, we have uh, 275. I think uh, even uh, the uh, Stade Militaire or uh, Orca will be uh, ready uh, this week. Although the minister is satisfied with the progress of the work, his fervent wish is that citizens respect measures to curb the virus so no one gets to the stage of using these centers. As for the medical personnel, they are ready to respond whenever called upon and aware of where to report for coronavirus duties. So on a similar note, the city of Douala has rehabilitated three more centers to host new COVID-19 cases in the littoral region. The first official outing of the littoral governor, Samuel Diodene Vaha Dibor, after surviving a coronavirus attack, took him to one of the sites located in the Yasan neighborhood that will be hosting potential cases. The governor, after his tour, said Douala is ready to accommodate more than 500 new cases in these centers. Details with Rosalind Forza. The last two COVID updates published by the Ministry of Public Health shows that Douala is increasingly becoming the epicenter of the pandemic in Cameroon. Out of the 84 cases recorded recently, the city alone scored 61 new infections, figures which have prompted the rapid rehabilitation of social housing facilities in Yasa to host asymptomatic COVID patients. Literal governor, after his visit to the site, says Douala is ready to accommodate new cases. The place is good for about 400 people and I'm um, asking all those who are going to come here to be disciplined because you cannot run away. The governor in his first official outing after surviving the coronavirus infection also paid a visit at the Lakentene Hospital and the Bapelepe Stadium scheduled to host some 192 patients. For Cameroon to boldly come out of this pandemic, the governor has urged inhabitants to portray the value of solidarity throughout this period. I'm asking people to be disciplined, to wear those masks. Today I'm well. I've made my test and well. Yesterday I was a dead man, and you see, but you have to encourage everybody to see that uh, solidarity is a good thing. This especially concerns the town of Douala because by virtue of its population density, the situation may get to undesired heights. We now take you over to the Public Health Emergency Operations Center where our reporter Gilbert Ongene is on standby with the latest update on the situation of the coronavirus in Cameroon today. And Gilbert, we hear that there are more and more Cameroonians who are being cured of the COVID-19 disease and that the total number of Cameroonians now stands at 900 and 15 persons. Can you confirm that figure with me, Gilbert? Welcome on the news. Yeah, definitely very meaningful for uh, 915 people who have effectively recovered from the uh, coronavirus, as you rightly said, while ago, as of today. 
up from the 805 of uh, yesterday. Concretely, this means that an additional 110 persons have recovered from uh, the COVID-19 across uh, the national uh, territory. And there are, however, 101 new cases uh, today compared to the 84 uh, of uh, yesterday, uh, Monday. Uh, one death has unfortunately been recorded uh, in the, across the national territory. And uh, then the take home message here at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center is that the government, working alongside foreign partners, is doing all efforts necessary to make sure that uh, this disease is uh, taken care of and, of course, that things come back to normal. But uh, the population out there, on their part, should also be responsible and make sure that they respect the barrier uh, measures put in place by government, uh, which, of course, uh, are, are being uh, broadcast in all the media across the national territory so that uh, this disease cannot propagate or spread across uh, the national territory. Your public health officials are also calling on parents to be very responsible and to make sure that they pass on this message to their children, the message of the barrier measures, so that the children grow up to get to you, be used to this habit of barring the way to the spread of uh, the COVID-19. That is the situation out here at the Public Health Emergency Operations Center. Ben, over to you. Thank you very much, Gilbert Tongene, on that reassuring note. But let me take you over to the Southwest region, where the news is that is not that very reassuring. We have been told there that 18 new cases of the COVID-19 have been reported in that part of the country, bringing the total number of infected cases to 31, with three deaths recorded already. The information was disclosed in Boya today. Uh, following a meeting with the COVID-19 task force of the region chaired by the Southwest Regional Governor Bernard Okalia Bilai. Details with Fem Bunye Ayise from CRTV Southwest. As the number of COVID-19 infected cases continue to rise in the Southwest region, new strategies to curb its spread are being implemented. During the follow-up meeting chaired by Southwest Governor Bernal Kalyabilai, regional heads of various services and other stakeholders met to evaluate the effectiveness of measures put in place and to take stock of new COVID-19 cases. As at now, we have... Uh a total of 280 that we have tested and out of the 280 we have 31 that are, are positive um, three deaths um, two died out of the region while one died in the region but the results came out positive only after the person must have died a number of recommendations were equally made in the course of the meeting to strengthen the regional response force the public uh, needs to be aware of the fact that COVID-19 is real because when you go out, you notice that people have not changed their habits. So we actually need to sensitize the public a little bit more. Southwest Governor Mr. Bernal Kalyabilai called on media practitioners and other stakeholders to increase sensitization messages so as to raise public awareness and limit the spread of the coronavirus. And up to the Northwest region now, where um, special hygiene and sanitation kits to meet the needs of persons living with disabilities in that part of the country, worth some 8 million CFA francs, have been distributed by the Cameroon Baptist Convention Health Services to associations of persons living with disabilities. The COVID-19 prevention kits, according to the director of the health services, T. Pius Muffin is expected to reach over 1,500 vulnerable persons with disabilities across the region. We have details with all at Titanki. Official statistics indicate that persons living with disabilities in the Northwest region make up 10.5% of the total population of the Northwest. According to the Coordinator for Persons with Disability at the CBC Health Services, with the outbreak of COVID-19, these vulnerable group of persons are more exposed. Having access to hand washing points, hand sanitizing stations are not 
adapted to the specific needs of all persons with disabilities. To ensure that this group of persons respect the preventive measures, the director of the CBC Health Services and his team handed hygiene and sanitation kits consisting of faucet adopted buckets, child-friendly COVID-19 brochures, hand sanitizers, face masks, sanitary towels and liquid soap worth 8 million francs CFA to the different representatives of the Association of Persons Living with Disabilities. It's going to help us prevent ourselves. The face masks will help us. They have just done everything that we needed. The hygiene and sanitation kits, according to authorities of the CBC Health Services, are expected to reach more than 1,500 persons with hearing, visual, mobility, speech and neurological impairment. One of Cameroon's leading financial institutions, Société Générale, SGC, has donated some 8,000 liters of hydroalcoholic gel to the government as support in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The assistance was handed over by the managing director of SGC, Madame Mareme Mbaye Ndiaye, in the, to the Public Health Minister of Cameroon, Manauda Malachi, in Yaoundé today. Let's get to get to the Songazi reports from CRTV Center. The gesture by Societe Generale Cameroon, which has been operating in the country for more than 60 years, falls in line with their social corporate responsibility. They therefore believe that the 8,000 liters of hydroalcoholic gel handed to the Ministry of Public Health go a long way to curb the threatening coronavirus. Societe Generale is a leading bank in Cameroon, so it was important for us to really um, support the government in fighting uh, COVID-19. So today we have distributed uh, 80,000 uh, liters of uh, hydroalcoholic gel. This uh, gel will be distributed uh, in all the region of uh, Cameroon. During the donation exercise at the conference hall of the Ministry of Public Health, the managing director, Madame Maria Mbaye Ndiaye, also told Minister Manauda Malashi that her banking institution has implemented some safety measures to secure the health of their employees and clients. Societe Generale Cameroon has adjusted the working conditions in all their agencies and is making use of teleconferences when need arises. The bank has equally put in place an international crisis management team which is coordinating the pandemic with some close to 1 billion CFA francs donated to health organizations. At the level of Cameroon, SJC is strictly respecting all the measures prescribed by government and health experts. So Cité General Cameroon is determined to continue giving its customers the best services. The news has been hitting the headlines across the country since yesterday and uh, a staggering 8,766 ghost workers have been defrauding the Cameroon government of illicitly earned monthly salaries worth millions of CFA francs. Ever since they were named and shamed, very few of them have shown up to regularize their situation. Go past 30 days without any justification, these illicitly earned salary earners will be purely and simply suspended from the country's payroll. As Moki Edwin Kinzika reports, the exercise seeks to flush ghost workers out of the public service and secure more resources for the state. Moki. The wait has been long. 5,045 civil servants and 3,721 state employees are expected at the Ministry of the Public Service for, one, not taking part at the head count of state workers, two, refusing to respond to written queries, three, neglecting notices and radio announcements, inviting them to regularize their situations, and four, not reacting even when their salaries have been temporarily suspended. We need to know where they are, what they are doing, and we send them letters. So we need their answers. And because we are in a special context due to COVID-19, 
we thought it's not good for all of them to come until Yaoundé here. That's why we thought we should put at their disposal phone numbers, WhatsApp, email addresses, so they can write to us. Minister Le is emphatic on what will happen if they do not answer government's call within 30 days. If we are not convinced by what they will tell us, by the justifications they will send to us, we will be obliged to convince them physically. If they are right, they will immediately be reestablished uh, for their salary. But if they are wrong, they will be punished. This litigation phase follows a pre-litigation period at the Ministry of Finance. It is final. And it is on that note that we put an end on this edition of the 730 News. I'm very sorry for the sneezing bout, but you can be very sure that it had nothing to do with the COVID-19. Rather, it had more to do with the cold inside the studio. I'll be right back with you tomorrow and in good health. Good night.